What's going on everybody? Steve here. Welcome back to Philosopher Cards. Um, got a little buyout situation going on here today. So I want to talk through what I look for when, you know, potentially making an investment in some sorcery cards because the time is the kind of time is kind of right for some beta. Um, prices were dropping. We're going to see some print runs and uh, things coming to an end. Um, availability of boxes and such. Um, no more waves, things like that. So um, we got a lot of stuff here. First, I, I did get a little bit of fan mail, so I, I want to show this off. Uh, Nathan sent some stuff to me. He he was watching some of my videos, and he kind of ran across um, ran across some things from from back in the day, and he sent it through. So I wanted to just kind of take a moment and talk about it. So um, he sent a few of these things. Look at check this out, guys. This is like an old Magic: The Gathering Battle Mage game. Um, so I, I, you know, what Nathan was saying was, is that, uh, let's see, the years have been a little bit unkind to such games as Battle Mage. It was solid at the time and it has enthusiasts to this day with lore and such. Um, so I, I, if you guys know how to get this working, <laughs> you know, on a, on a computer these days, I'd love to know. Um, it's, it seems pretty neat. So I love this. Um, and then he sent some other cards. So this is like the Arkenstone. Um, from a Lord of the Rings game, which it's like a Lord of the Rings trading card game. So that's pretty awesome. I do think that like Magic could have added some some Arkansas Stone stuff into it. Um, then this one we got. Uh, yeah, I'm not actually really sure what this is like. A Happy Tanks. Lastly, uh, Legend of the Five Rings. So this was a popular game at the time. It was kind of like a, um, a a card game where you had rings in the center and you would you would try to take those rings. Um, so a little pack of cards. I love the fact that it's still in a booster pack, so I'm going to hang on to this. Uh, you know, he, he mentioned, too, that some games are great ambitious and yet still doomed to, you know, dwindle. So this is this is kind of like the, the warning to some games out there that that don't do it right. You know, um, beautiful, beautiful cards, you know, get some good art on these things. Um, Will Wizard, you know, Nathan made a point, too, like, Will Wizards of the Coast hold with all the, you know, power creep and things going on today so wanted to share that thanks again to nathan for sending a sending a little gift through i really appreciate it we're gonna just you know keep it back here and the uh the realm of the realm of relics and objects realms of relics so let's talk about the buyout and uh why i did this so there's a few things there's five things actually that i look for when trying to find a deal or undervalued cards in beta sorcery beta today the first thing is if you're looking at foils and foils are really the only thing right now that i would consider buying out just because a you know non-foils are for players right and uh, I, you know i don't want to i don't want to impact anything going on there foils are a little bit of different animal they're for collectors investors maybe players looking to bling out their decks and such so things I look for. The first ratio is the comparison from the alpha foil price ratio to the beta foil price ratio. And you want that number to be, I don't want to put this, what you would look for is a, is a very large number. So you take the alpha price divided by the beta price and you want to see a large number there, like 10, right? This, this was like 10. 160 for an alpha earthquake foil, 16 for a beta earthquake foil. So you're looking at 10. 10's a good number. You start to see like 160 in alpha, 160 in beta. You're like, hmm, wouldn't I rather have the alpha card? That's right. So you're, you're looking for a big number. The next thing I look for is the ratio from beta foil to beta non foil. And you are looking for that to be a very low number. Right, so non-foil earthquake is five dollars. Let's say foil earthquake is fifteen dollars. That's only a three, right? You could see some cards with a number that's a nine or a ten or something really high, and you might say, okay, um, it, it's just going to make sense to buy the the non-foil. At some point, if the non-foil goes so high, people are going to be like, I'm just going to buy the foil. So there should be a healthy ratio between beta non-foil to foil, and there should be a healthy ratio between beta foil to alpha foil. So those are first two things I look at. The second thing, oh, or sorry, the third thing I'll look at would be um, the playability. 
So, and with Earthquake, as we as we know, Earthquake is a very powerful card, and I believe it's in seven out of the eight top Gen Con decks. Um, it was in a lot of the top decks at the Courtesan Cup. Um, it's just a really powerhouse card. So you know there's going to be demand for a card like this because of the playability. The uh, the last the sorry the fourth thing I'll look at is the artist. And is the artist, you know, in, in terms of really coveted, or is there something special with it? Um, you know, good example of this would be Frazetta stuff in, in Alpha. Um, and the very last thing that I would look at would be the rarity. So rarity could tell you how many might be in existence. So whenever you're evalu evaluating something like this, whether it be a stock in the stock market, you wanna know what's the whole market size, how many are in the market, at that current price because you want there to be low amounts in the market such that if you try to make a move and buy up I don't know 25 50 cards you want to see that put some upward pressure onto the market immediately so I bought out I think somewhere to the tune of 30 cards I don't know if they all came in yet or if they're still coming in I bought out everything up to like $25 at the time anything under $25 on eBay um, the Discord or um, TCG player, I cleaned them out. A um, couple came to market after I, I bought out, but in my opinion, if I look at those ratios and you compare to other cards that are of similar caliber, um, you know, I, I, I would argue this card right today belongs at, you know, $50 as a foil. And I would argue that... Um, in the future, if we see more upward pressure on, on beta, you could see this as high as, you know, $80, $90 a card. And if a lot of folks are playing this in their decks and they're very competitive, they might want to bling out their decks. So that's essentially what I was trying to do here. I'm trying to, to look and see like, what card has all those ratios that are right and that can, you know, that's not an ordinary. Like if somebody would say, hey, let's go buy out all the foil polar bears because we're speculating on Arthurian legends. That's great. That's great that we can buy all the polar bears, but there's going to be a ton more that come back to market because there's just so many because it's a, you know, it's an ordinary foil. And it's just hard to justify when the non-foil version is so cheap, right? Everybody's going to say, well, do I really want that foil version or can I get away with the non-foil version? So, you know, for me, I, again, I don't want to touch the market that players are in and the non-foils and things like that. You're not going to really see me buy out non-foil stones or cores. I am holding a, a good bit of them um, just for myself, um, but I'm not actively buying out non-foil things. Um, if somebody approached me today and said, hey, I have you know, 10 earthquake foils for $15 a piece. Do you want to buy them all? I'd, I'd cut them a check and buy them immediately or, you know, send them PayPal and buy it immediately. So I, this is a long-term hold. Um, don't, uh, you know, don't think that I'm going out there and I'm going to be flipping these for 30 or 40. Um, if I'm doing something like this where I'm buying out the market, um, I'm, I'm going to buy it out and I'm going to hold it. So these, these will probably go in and, you know, and vanish away from the market for quite some time. Um, interesting too, I can actually tell which ones are summer and which ones aren't. And I can tell which sellers were holding it longer than I, it's just very interesting. Like, uh, this is very interesting what you, what you find. So this is a good one. There's tons of other ones out there. I mean, there's more opportunity for buyouts right now in sorcery beta than I have <laughs> capital uh, that I want to deploy to it. So there's tons of opportunity and it's worthwhile if you're investing or collecting or something like that, you know, consider thinking about, uh, hey, does it make sense for me to, to buy out a particular card? Um, you know, I, I do tend to speculate on some singles here and there. I actually, a separate game, I thought the lands in Karlov Manor were going to be something. And um, I almost bought out, like when they were first launched, it was like $2 a land, something crazy. And I was like, I'm, I feel like I want to buy all these. I didn't because I, I was just involved in too many other things. But I should have. I should have. So I didn't want to make the same mistake with Earthquake. Um, again, this doesn't seem... 30 doesn't seem like a ton. But there's only, when there's only 34 on the market and you buy out 30, 
it's a big impact, right? It, 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 it'll shake things. Um, you know, I expect there to be some upward pressure on earthquake, maybe even after this video, um, you know, folks may say, Oh yeah, there's no, he's got a point there with earthquake. So thanks again, everybody. Thanks again to Nathan for sending me that care package. Um, really neat stuff. So, um, again, can't wait for Arthurian legends. If you're a patron, I do have a few more kits left. Um, and if you want to sign up as a patron, I am selling Arthurian Legends. Um, I have some kits that I've put together myself. I am not advertising to non-patrons. It is for patrons only. So um, if you become a patron and you're interested, I'll talk to you about the deal. Um, it's, it's, a good, it's a good value. So I put, the, put together a nice, a nice thing for the patrons. Thanks again, everybody. And uh, let me know what you think. Do you think that I'm uh, evil for buying these? Uh, you know, are you going to... Um, you know, boycott philosopher cards now on TCG Player because I'm buying stuff out. What do you? What are your thoughts? Anyhow, thanks again, everybody. We'll talk to you all later.